My name is Joe Connor. When I was nine years old, the FALN murdered my father at Francis Tavern here in New York City. It's an attack many of us might not even remember. January 24th, 1975, the terrorist group known as FALN, fighting for Puerto Rico's independence, bombed the historic Francis Tavern in downtown New York. Here's a look at how it looks today, and here's a look at what it looked like then. Four people died, including Joseph Connor's 33-year-old dad. You know, I was nine years old. We were gonna be celebrating my ninth birthday that night and my brother's 11th, and we came home from school. It was a nice January day, and we went out to play, and my mom called us in, uh, telling us there had been an explosion downtown near where my father worked. The group haunted the U.S. long before the days of ISIS and Al-Qaeda. They called themselves the Freedom Fighters, and they were responsible for around 120 bombings between 1974 and 1983 in the U.S. And now, decades later, they're back in the headlines as controversy grows over the founder of the group, Oscar Lopez Rivera, who is set to be honored in the June 11th Puerto Rican Day Parade in New York City, where he'll receive the National Freedom Award. Like a freedom hero? I don't even know what that means. But a freedom hero at a parade and making him a celebrity? He's a terror. I mean, he's a terrorist. Oscar Lopez Rivera served 35 years in prison for his role in the group. Uh, he was convicted on plotting to overthrow the government, and he was freed just last month after President Obama offered him clemency. His supporters say Lopez was never actually linked to any of FALN's bombings. To learn more, I Skyped with former FBI investigator Rick Hahn, who filled me in on some of the details. He's the representative as a political prisoner when in fact he's not a political prisoner, in my view, he's completely a criminal convicted terrorist. And let me add that in a democracy, terrorism has no place. Terrorism is the sort of uh, tactic that is used against an authoritarian government where the people have no voice. That's not the case in Puerto Rico. That's not the case in the United States. Meanwhile, sponsors are dropping out of the parade. You have JetBlue, who's dropped out, Goya, and Univision, too. This is a picture of my dad and me at the Nine-Eyed Bridge, it was called. Um, I think I was about seven, and there, my dad was around 30. Here's the thing, when is the parade? Like, I, I, I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna watch it, I don't really care. So who's really that upset? I actually honest? used to work right by this parade every year and I would get off on Grand Central and have to cross over to get to work on 6th Avenue. And it was so popular. There were people coming from all over the place. I've heard some people weren't going, but it's still expected to attract around 2 million people. The fact that there's still like some kind of connection is disconcerting. Whether he directly planned to bomb Francis Tavern doesn't matter. You're in charge of the group that committed a terrorist attack. 120 bombings. How are you honoring this guy? It's yeah. incredible. There's, there's a lot of echoes in this controversy to the controversies over the Irish Republican Army, yeah. which had a lot of support in New York City's Irish community way back when from prominent people who were funding terrorist acts. I think abroad. this is, you know, like they're single handedly killing their own parade. I mean, that's what's happening. When you lose sponsors like that and the people that have spoken out, it, to me, you know, it's their own fault. They're making the bed. Let them lie in it.